This isn't an insane hoarding stockpile. This is the stuff that you are eating on a daily basis with your meals for the month. This is what's going to get us through the hard times. Number one, be a price hawk and shop the sales and know the regular prices of your go-to items in all the stores in your area. What you can in your budget, grab extra of. So if you're buying one for now, buy two for later. Stay in your budget and it is possible. You're going to menu plan. Everything I have in here belongs to a menu item, a meal we were always having, stewed tomatoes. The major one thing that I use stewed tomatoes in is our minestrone soup. That's the only main purpose I buy this for. What is your number one meal your family could not live without? It goes into rotation every two weeks or one week. Now you're going to take that number one meal, calculate how many things you need for that to have it for that many weeks out of the month or nights out of the month that you're doing it. Write down the ingredients and then you're going to multiply that. And then you know that every month we need this much poundage of meat, poultry. We need these many canned goods to make it. So once you do that, then you know when you see a sale what you could stock up on. So when you buy one now, two for later, this is going to help you build up. I get a lot of questions where people get stuck on, I am going through faster than what I'm replacing. You've got to let something sit to make this work. Okay. So if you're buying one for now, that's one for now and two for later. If you're using it within the same month, it's going to be hard to keep going. Give it a little time. Try to make it stay there, but in your food budget, continue to buy what you buy for those meals during the month. Or you're going to just be constantly using it up within that month. Number three is yes, rotate, but the expiration dates, some of them are myths. Canned tomatoes are a different story. Canned tomatoes are very high in acidity. Best buy, okay guys, best buy. It's not eh, by April 6, 2024, throw this can out. No, 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 no. And these companies have to put that on the can. You could go five years with these. Go five years past that expiration date, you guys, ignore that. So you keep your canned goods much longer. Rachel asks, how do you keep track of the dates on the items? I don't. We're, I'm in this every day. We're eating through this and I'm just moving it forward. The major things I am keeping an eye on the dates is these right here. The, the consumables that really don't have a long shelf life, like your salad dressings in my marinades that I bought over the summer. That deal was amazing. Those have to be used pretty much by the day. They could go a little longer, but then they start tasting funky. So ooh. everything else, no, nope, it could go longer. Your box goods right here, your stuffings. This is when I load up this time of year during Thanksgiving. And they last all year for my stovetop chicken casserole and for sides. I've actually used stuffing two years past its date on the box. It was fine, tasted fine. So you guys, you'll be surprised how much this stuff stretches. But what I do is when I rotate, I'm, I'm bringing things forward. So when I get something new, they go in the back and that's it. But if I do bring something home, I look at the date and if that date actually needs to get up sooner than what I have on my shelf, those go to the front. You've got to check them though, okay? You have to be vigilant. If it's dented, especially up here, if it's dented anywhere near this, uh-uh, get rid of it. Now, sometimes when we come in here, we're putting things away, I'll drop a can and like right here, we'll get dented or something, it's fine. If it's not messing with where it's sealing, you're good to go. I always get asked, oh, you must throw away a lot or you're hoarding. This isn't hoarding. Hoarding is if this stuff sat here and I just kept building upon it and building upon it and building upon it and never used it. This is where we shop from. We shop from here first and then the store. The number four tip, the things that you have all the time that you eat, get it in the form of long-term. Canned chicken. If you can get your hands on any freeze dried food, do it. If you eat a lot of canned beans or beans in general, get it in the long term form okay grab your beans your milk powdered milk you guys if your family has never had dry milk slowly start getting them used to it so if you're noticing that your milk in your half gallon or your gallon is going down make as much as you think will fit in that jug and pour it into your milk shake it up that way they could start getting used to the taste and then you can get used to having it. Butter powder. This is really good, you guys. Reconstituted to make smooth butter. 
and you can put it on toast, anything. The butter powder you can use to, as a substitution in a recipe. So next, you will need dry whole egg powder. This is egg. Use this for scrambled eggs. Use it for your baking. So when egg prices are absolutely ridiculous, you can still bake with what is in your long-term food storage, okay? Make it your own. What do you go to the store for that you could learn to make on your own? So that way you don't always have to run to the store. So of course, bread, crackers. We could do our own cake mixes, fajita seasonings, enchilada sauce seasonings, ranch, taco seasoning, hot cocoa mix, barbecue seasonings, our own brownie mixes and it's easy and they're yummy and then every time I make them Derek and I look at each other like why don't we do this more often it's because we've gotten used to the convenience foods and we've got to cut it out we could save so much money by making our own pre-made mixes we're so spoiled we're so used to convenience of just being able to go out and get something Guys, I'm sorry but down the road it's not going to be that easy it's not and we need to start doing hard things. I haven't made my own pie crust in years because I got lazy. I got just used to the convenience of the good old rolled pie crust. We have to start going back to some basics because we're going to need to know how to make a loaf of bread. But if, if we've learned anything from the last three years, I kind of go, do we really need to wonder why we should do it? If you feel inspired that this is what you need to do, do it. Click on this video right here where you can get started on learning on how to make some recession-proof pantry meal kits. These are with all shelf-stable ingredients. Great way to start building your food storage. I'll meet you over there.